fuel boils off and needs constant topping up. A tous de DDO, attention pour moins une minute. The DDO is going to call out the one minute mark and we'll be into the final 60 seconds before liftoff. Top, H0 moins une minute. Well, all that's left to explain is the ignition sequence. Remember we said how power was passing from the ground to the launcher to make her autonomous. Well, this phase, the ignition phase, is already carried out by the onboard computer. Here's what to watch for. It begins when those cryogenic arms, the yellow bars, will pull back at minus five seconds when the DDO says psych. At zero, he will call out allumage, which is ignition, and the main engine will light. But we don't lift off quite yet. Count to seven. For seven seconds, the computers are checking the performance in the main engine. While it's burning on the pad, they'll do it twice to confirm it, and then give the order, follows OK, for ignition of the boosters. Final countdown. A tous de DDO, attention pour le décompte final. Dix, neuf, huit, sept, six, cinq, quatre, trois, deux, unité, Top, allumage Vulcan. Allumage EAP, décollage. Beautiful pictures again of Arian coming roaring off the pad, leaving a trail of gold. I think we've lost her in the clouds. There she is. Did you see the cryo arms open at minus five? Did you count to seven? Tous les paramètres sont nominaux. Everything is on board is okay, says the DDO. At 18.36 local time and right on time, Arian began her mission lifting off from the ground here in French Guiana, beginning her first mission of the year, rising into the clear skies over French Guiana, weighing 775 tons right now. She's burning 5 tons of fuel per second, if you can believe that, 2.5 tons in each booster, and the core stage burning an additional 300 kilograms of fuel per second. She is following the program in the onboard computer, which is located in the vehicle equipment bay below the satellites which gives all the orders, including stage separation. We'll, we'll soon begin to see those. We're in the first of four flight phases for area, and the first three are powered. The last is not. We'll describe each in turn uh, so you can follow area as she heads east across the Atlantic to separate the Les passengers over the east coast of Africa and over the Indian Ocean. Flight phases are right now the main engine and the two boosters are burning. Boosters will burn for another 20 seconds roughly. Then the main engine will burn alone for about 9 minutes. Then the upper stage will burn alone for about 16 minutes. And the final flight phase, not powered, we'll get back to that when it happens. Basically, we're using the simple solid propulsion in the boosters to get off the ground, away from the pull of the earth, and the more complex liquid propulsion cryogenics to ob obtain speed and performance. We're waiting for confirmation of the booster separation. You probably will see that. Des étages à poudre. There it is. The DDO has just called that. You can see the two boosters falling away, leaving their vapor trail. In the middle is the core stage area and continuing to burn. Nice shots. Tous les paramètres à bord sont nominaux. The boosters will fall 500 kilometers from shore in a protected area. Having done their job, we're now in the second powered flight phase, the main engine. La trajectoire burning est normale. We're coming up on separation of the fairing. Just before we do, take a look at the left hand side of your screen, the upper left, the cursor crawling up the line. That's actually two lines. One is superimposed on another, the optimum trajectory and the real-time trajectory, as long as they're one and the same, we're right where we should be. Below that, two lines, A and V. A is our altitude. You see we're climbing. V is our speed. We need between 8 and 9 kilometers per second to inject the satellites. So watch the numbers. The DDO has just said that the fairing has been jettisoned. That's coming right on time. The f exposing Amazonas Trace. Now you can see the black and blue box on the right. The fairing protects the payload from shocks during Arian's ascent 
through the atmosphere. Tous les we? paramètres à bord Once sont we leave the atmosphere at about 100 kilometers up, we don't need it anymore. And we can drop uh, the weight, which is about 500 kilos. The core stage, basically a big propellant tank with the engine. It uses cryogenic propellant. You've heard that word before. Cryogenics offer certain advantages over storable propellant, which is the other option, namely better performance. They can also be turned off and on, and its motors uh, can be reignited and can function longer, and we can see that with the upper stage, which is reignitable on the Ariane, and with the fourth stage called the frigate with the Soyuz. Ariane 1 to 4, previous, uh, the previous uh, models, owed their success mainly to storable propellant, not cryogenics. There are fuels that are kept in ambient temperature and don't Tous evaporate sont nominaux, like cold uh, cryogenic does, and you saw that before liftoff with the constant topping up we needed. Storable propellant is also cheaper, but cryogenics offer better performance. You can see Amathonis exposed to the elements. Bef below that is a black bell-shaped structure. That's the silda, the carrying structure inside of which is our second passenger. Next up, the latest in a series of profiles of space professions here at the Space Base. My name is Guillaume Lezac, I'm 31 and been working for five years with Ariane Space as a launch site engineer. I've been living in Kuru for two years. I started with launch campaigns prior to looking after ground facilities after gaining experience and knowledge in relation to the needs of the launcher. In terms of the development of my career, after graduating as an aeronautics engineer, I started working on aircraft engines at Airbus, then in the US, and I came back to Europe, where I worked on the development of the ATV, the resupply spacecraft of the International Space Station. This first experience in the space industry made me want to join the teams of Ariane Space. My work time is split between operations in and out of the launch campaigns, while I am in charge of making sure that the very systems and methods are consistent. With Ariane 5, we put in place a set of methods that have been made possible for us to deliver a first-in-class reliability 